My name is Derek Duncan. I'm Professor of Italian at St Andrews University. And my current uh, research project, which is funded by the Leaving Hume Trust, is called Loose Ends. And it looks at cultures and histories of Italian emigration to four different cities across the globe. And the four cities are Edinburgh, Hamburg, Adelaide and New Orleans. Um, although lots of work has been done on Italian emigration, it's largely been done on the relationship between Italy, the place of origin and particular points of arrival. I'm much more interested in exploring uh, aspects of the Italian diaspora, so very much indebted to the work of Donna Gabaccia here. Uh, looking at non-linear accounts of Italian migration and more fluid chronologies and connections. What I'm not trying to attempt is uh, to write for micro-histories of Italian migration to these different places, but rather look for connections, points of contact, and more than anything, look for unexpected forms of cultural influence or imprinting or legacy of the Italian presence in these four different sites. Um, my work methodologically is very much influenced by Eduardo Palozzi, the Scots-Italian pop artist and sculptor, who was very interested in collage as a technique of as an artistic technique, but also as a way of actually understanding the world, bringing things into juxtaposition, creating layerings, creating forms of connectedness which resist uh, conventional forms of narration. Uh, he was also very much interested in translation, moving across languages, moving across different media, and very interested indeed in popular culture and the way in which popular culture and high cultural touch. Also interested in the industrial landscapes of the modern world. And I think work and industry is an important dimension of the project. Um, the cultural forms that I'm looking at, because I'm not an historian, if anything, I'm a cultural historian or a cultural critic. I'm looking at novels, films, um, autobiographies, uh, archival records, but also photographs. And it's photographs that I'm going to talk about really today to illustrate certain aspects of the first part of my project, which is, which is based in Edinburgh. And it's the work that I've been able to do to date. I've been taking inspiration from the photo archive of Scran, which is a service, a division of Historic Environment Scotland. And what Scran does is provide a, an umbrella for the photographic uh, records, archives of a whole range of different museums, galleries, um, organisations across Scotland. So using this huge repository, I've done searches for Italians in a broad sense and come up with a series of different images. And what's really fascinating about these images is that Unlike the kind of images you get, the photographs you get of Italian immigrants in books uh, about Italian immigrants, uh, they're not curated. They're there for a whole range of different purposes and allow a kind of um, more creative exploration, I would say, for understanding the Italian presence in a particular site. Um, and it was using these uh, photographs that I came to develop one of the strongest dimensions, I think, of the project. And that is really looking for the kind of um, unexpected traces of the Italian presence on the Scottish landscape, but also looking at how Italians were interacting with the local population. And again, I think this is one of the um, shortcomings of a lot of work on uh, migration. It tends to kind of like focus on and isolate what's perceived as being the immigrant population and looks at how they lived, how they interacted with each other and how they look back at the country of origin and kind of forgets really how they interact with the environment round about them. So uh, I'm going to show some photographs, a couple of photographs which I find particularly inspirational. The first one actually came from 
the Scran archive. And it's a couple of images turned into postcards of a young girl, Maria Rosamin Kela, who was awarded the title of Lanimer, Lanimer Queen in the Scottish town of Larrack in 1907. So a kind of pageant, uh, local pageant. And what was fascinating to me was that this showed the level of integration of the Minkella family in that town as early as 1907. The Italians had been coming to Scotland since the late 19th century in, in, in reasonable numbers. And also, as I discovered uh, a bit more about her family, uh, realised that they were actually quite well off. They were one of the first families to actually own a motor car, for example, in Lanark. But I became even more fascinated by uh, the figure of her father who in 1912 bought, uh, set up a large Italian ice cream shop in the town of Lanark. And this on the left is a photograph of the shop as it now stands today, which is an opticians. In the census of 1911, he is recorded as Stephen Minkela. In the census of 1901, he bears an Italian given name, Stefano. And I was really fascinated by the transition, the, this, this transition from Italian to uh, the anglicised form of the name in that 10 year period. What's interesting too about the building, and this is really what I was meaning about the kind of unexpected, the unseen traces of the Italian presence in a local landscape, is that above the door of the shop, he inscribed his initials, SM 1912. So even though that building is there today, it it's functions as an optician's, there's nevertheless that kind of seen, unseen presence, this kind of a hidden in, in uh, full view uh, record memory of uh, the, the Italian shop itself. The second example which I want to give is perhaps even more resonant of how I'm beginning to understand Italians in Scotland throughout the 20th century. Uh, the photograph which I found in the archive of the Edinburgh Collector Community Archive is of a woman, Ethel Garden, sitting in, the, in her garden with her son. The photograph was taken around about 1930 and seems to be a fairly innocent and innocuous family snapshot. The information that accompanies the photograph in the archive though, points us to a detail of the picture, which potentially is more uh, disconcerting. On, in the background of the picture over Mrs. Garden's right hand shoulder is an ice cream cart, we're told belonging to the Cimarelli family. Now, again, on the one hand, this seems just to be a uh, a detail of everyday urban life in Edinburgh of the period. But we learn that in June 1940, when Italy entered the Second World War, the Cimarelli family shop, which was in the neighbourhood, was looted as uh, Edinburgh was caught up in the anti-Italian uh, rioting, which had, which had broken out across the UK. Two members of the family, Giovanni and Feliciano, were subsequently arrested as enemy aliens and were being transported on the Arundora Star to be interned in Canada in July 1940, when the ship was torpedoed by a German U-boat off the Irish coast. Giovanni lost his life in the sinking, whereas Feliciano survived and after a period of internment on the Isle of Man, returned to take up the reins of the family business in Edinburgh after the war. Um, what the photograph of Miss, Mrs. Garden suggests to me though, is something about the complexity of understanding the Italian migrant presence in Scotland in the period. One of the things which most fascinates me about the image is the gap, the distance between Mrs. Garden in the foreground and the ice cream cart in the background. And I think one of the things which my project is trying to do is to work precisely in that gap, asking questions about how the local communities engaged with the new Italian population, how Italian immigrants engaged with uh, with, with, with Scottish people. 
and exploring really the different dimensions of the gap in between. And I think it's this kind of like uncreated photographic archive, which is perhaps the most unconscious but most potentially resonant resource which I'm able to actually draw on in order to achieve uh, my aims.